Hello people, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Modular Builds. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And in today's modular build, we are going to be working on something that's uh, a little quirky. More kind of aesthetically functional than actual functional, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, so this has been a request from a couple of people. Uh, more specifically, one of the moderators, uh, Combat, has requested that we build... A space centre, something where you can focus kind of all your high-tech buildings around, and obviously uh, the two kind of space buildings that we have, and a couple of the monuments as well, like uh, the Hadron Collider and the Space Elevator, uh, we'll try and get those in as well. This is the first time I've ever tried to build something that's dedicated just to space, so apologies if you don't really enjoy this one. Like I said, it's a little more quirky as opposed to kind of useful, uh, like a lot of the other stuff on this map, like the University Campus, the transport hubs and metro plazas, etc. Uh, and kind of forestry so let's go ahead and dive in so I have just a really basic hooked up roundabout here into my uh, highway network uh, I recommend you do hook this thing nearby to a highway uh, one because it looks really good from the highway and two it draws a hell of a lot of visitors <laughs> so you're going to want that road connection and the uh, public transport connection like you can see I prepared a monorail line to be factored into this thing as well so for the roads, I'm going to be using pretty much all the uh, industry roads. Obviously these come with industry expansion. There's three variants, uh, small regular, small one way and the medium. Now let's just go ahead and dive in. Uh, so from your middle roundabout, obviously we're going to want to go ahead and uh, lock this off so it doesn't kind of bend out of shape as we draw off it. I'm going to go ahead and grab my medium industry road and then from the left hand side or right hand side, whichever uh, hand drive you're playing on, uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw out from this node point here by a distance of 2,500. So this is a fair old road. And there we go. So 2,500 in construction cost. We're going to get a nice big long main road like this. Then we're going to re-measure that road and we're going to find the 1,200 marker, which is right there. So draw a little road out so you know where it is. And then I'm going to grab my small industry road right here. We're going to come out on the opposite side of the marker to a distance of 180. Then we're going to draw this guy by a distance of 690. Okay, so we can delete this one. We just use that as a marker so we knew where the 1200 point was on this one. And then we can draw out, say, another 600 on that side as well. So what this is going to allow us to do, if we come into our public transport and to monorail, we're going to grab our monorail station and we're going to place this within this little kind of bracket that we've created uh, with the small road and the main road and then we just need to hook our monorail station uh, into your monorail network um, I went with monorail for this because it's kind of the most futuristic looking one feel free to use overground metro if you wanted to uh, but definitely factor public transport into this maybe something that doesn't use the road so try avoid trams or buses or trolley buses as well. Uh, I guess you could use a train station if you wanted to. Might be a little bit overkill, but um, overground metro or monorail will uh, will serve you just fine uh, for what you need to what you need to do. Okay, then we're going to come back into our medium industry road, and we're going to remeasure this road to the 2,000 point, which is right here. So I'm just going to draw a junction there, so I know where the 2,000 marker is. And then from this point, we're going to come out at an angle. Now if you want to find a road snap line point, say you just come to this first 10 marker and draw out a little bit of a road. And then from this one, we're just going to come all the way out and we're going to snap up to that. So you want this road to be kind of as straight as possible, so it kind of comes off at an angle. Kind of the the bend of the angle is really up to you. If you want it to be a little bit curved, you, know, you can do, but I thought for this build we'd try and keep you know, lots of kind of harsh angles, make it look quite modern and futuristic. Okay, then we're going to come into our unique buildings and we're going to grab the Chirpex launch site. And then we're going to place this thing on this kind of road that we just dropped in right here. So kind of in the middle, doesn't really matter if it's too centralised, you can't really tell anyway with this asset uh, because it's so big. It is, um, it's a pretty impressive one, it's very loud as well so... As well as placing this build near a highway, you're going to want to make sure that it's uh, away from any major residentials as well. Uh, and then we can delete that marker and just hook it in again with uh, a regular small road. It's kind of up to you. Um, 
if you want to put that there, it's not really essential. Then we're going to do is we're going to draw this road down by the side of the monorail, so it's just going to come right up parallel against it. Then we're going to jump into our unique buildings, we're going to come across to the content creator stuff, and then we're going to have a look at some of the, uh, I think it's the high tech content creator pack. Uh, you guys would have seen it at the start of the video anyway, which one you need for this. So we're going to place in the uh, semiconductor plant. And uh, this thing, again, you know, it's uh, kind of living up to his name. It's a very high-tech looking building. So it's almost got that kind of warehouse vibe to it. Uh, kind of very heavy, industrialised, modern warehouse. And uh, it kind of works in nicely with the, uh, the Chirpex launch site here as well. Uh, really, you can use any of these high-tech content creator buildings that you want to. You can maybe throw in the electric car factory here too. Um, you know, this thing looks really quite modern and almost space age, I guess. It's got some nice parking decals out the front as well. I kind of use whichever ones uh, suit your style, really. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to grab this small industrial road again. And we're going to come behind the uh, electric car factory. And you can delete this one here now. And then we're going to come up to this point right here. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the first unique building. And I'm going to use the Hadron Collider. So you can place this in uh, just next to your car factory here if you wanted to. Um, I would advise maybe move over a spot. Uh, and then what you're going to save room for here is a path. Uh, none of the part life paths really work too well with this. Maybe probably just the regular undecorated park path would be the best choice. But otherwise probably stick to... Uh, your regular pavement paths. Uh, I wouldn't really put too many trees through this thing. We will use some of the decorated ones for the front of this launch plaza here, but uh, otherwise the uh, the one without decoration seems to work pretty well too. Alright, so what I like to do out the front of the Hadron Collider is to include some parking lots. Now, for console players, this will take you an extraordinarily long time uh, for this to fit in. So we've talked about this before, um, using the local and organic produce specialization from Green Cities. Let's uh, go ahead and join a district. So you want to join a district, just a regular district tool. So I'll draw it roughly around here, maybe we'll put some in here as well. So this is uh, the, the console's way of getting parking lots, if you didn't know. Well, I'm sure most of you do by now. Organic and local produce, apply it to the district, and then you are going to want to zone out with your marquee tool. Two by four zonings, like this. Now there is an asset that comes with the local and organic produce specialization, that is just a parking lot. However, there are also multiple other two by four assets within that uh, pool of. Of, of, of buildings basically and um, it won't always spawn in the one that you want so you basically have to wait for one of them to spawn so say for example once these two in here spawned I would then fill in the next one the reason we don't do it because I may get a 4x4 in here or a 3x3 so you have to do it in this patchwork pattern until all of them come in it will take you a long time <laughs> We've done this on live stream before. Um, if you've tried it yourself, you know how long it takes. But it is a way of getting parking lots in uh, for console players. And um, I'll I'll just hang around until they do come in for kind of the final outro charge. And you can see the effect that it has uh, having that all the parking lots in front of this really big important building here. Uh, we're also starting to get a really nice kind of image from the highway as well. Very important kind of build we've got going on over here, right? Okay, fantastic news. So let's move on to the uh, kind of second phase of this thing right now. Let's tidy up this road a little bit here as well. Uh, so we're going to come back to our small industry road. And then from this snap point along the top edge of the roundabout, we're going to come out by 300. And we can now delete all the snap nodes here as well. I'd also recommend that kind of with your roundabout as well, keep them as industrial roads. It really helps add to the theme of this build because um, the industrial loads are really nice. They have these little kind of yellow bollards on them as well. I know the medium one looks really good heading down the middle too. Then we're going to grab a road toll and I'm going to go for the two-way toll booth. Uh, just the smallest one. You can use the larger one if you want to uh, but from my kind of testing of this build the uh, 
the small one works just fine. Then what we're going to do is come back and grab our small industry road and we're going to draw a box all the way around uh, this big Chirpex launch site. And I'll come down here and hook him into there. So that does help give a really nice border um, to this particular building because it kind of looks a little strange when it has nothing on it. Looks like uh, so Chucky has a, just message the Discord. Discord is in the link below, by the way, as well, in the description. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a road parallel with this one right here with two tiles in between. And then uh, you can just draw it up by 510 for right now, for example. And then uh, we'll go ahead and draw in uh, another one of 600. And then we want to come out by a little bit here. So the distance there from the tall booth is 210. Grab our freeform road, hook onto this road guideline right here. And then we're just going to curve the road a little bit. And then come in to our little box here. So just throw in a nice little curve. If you want to, you can just keep it straight right angles. It's kind of it's up to you, really. Uh, and then this space is going to be used for our... Uh, I think it's a unique building again, isn't it? Uh, where is it? Da, 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 da. Here it is. Uh, the Space Shuttle launch site. And, uh, we're going to place this thing in right up alongside the edge of this corner so it will be off center if you want to centralize it feel free but uh, I found it worked kind of a little bit nicer without it it's going to come out by 90 and of course we're going to box this thing in again so this is going to sit right up alongside our I can't remember the name of these things Chirpex launch site what's this one called? Space Shuttle launch site right okay uh, then we're going to draw this road out a little bit further, and then we're going to do something similar again. We're just going to try and get that straight road on an angle, about 600 there. So you have kind of a triangle right here, so from each corner you have 450, 420, and 600. And then right here we're going to have room for our space elevator, and then we can place this in just about here. So kind of a very cluster of important space looking buildings along here. All looks very bare at the moment, but don't worry, we'll do a lot of um, detailing with fences and trees to kind of make this thing look a little more secure and kind of government organised. Okay, and then what we want to do here is we're going to come back to this main road. So you draw out by another 250 and then just hook it into the box over here and then draw in another road down here and hook into this corner which is the road that feeds onto the Hadron Collider and then really with this space you kind of have free room now to go ahead and place in any of the buildings that you wanted to and um, there's a lot of opportunities to use the high-tech stuff here so uh, the Robotics Institute and um, kind of is a really nice looking space age building you know and have a lot of this stuff is uh, it's a fairly big build as well uh, for console players with your nine tile limit you may want to kind of scale this down a bit <laughs> Uh, you will take up an awful lot of your map with this thing, but you know, it's a it's a fun little build anyway. There's also the software development studio too, if you wanted to squeeze this thing in you can do. Um, television station kind of works nicely. Uh, another one of the unique buildings that fits in really nicely with this thing um, is the climate research station. Uh, this thing just kind of fits in really nicely, we'll just kind of drop it on the road here so you can see it. It's got um, kind of this little radio mast with it, again lots of kind of space age looking stuff that just fits in nicely with the build. Feel free to factor this in somewhere as well. Uh, it does have kind of a lot of green grass integrated in with it, so maybe it could be like a little uh, stationary support building. Uh, so I might just draw this off with the with the correct road. Let's grab our industry. So I might just want to drop this towards the edge of the build, so it's kind of like a little supporting building. Right? Okay. So detailing, uh, definitely jump into your uh, oil industry area and grab oil industry fence, turn off oil snapping uh, and basically kind of around the perimeter of this thing, so starting at the front of it, uh, you just want to draw in lots of very sharp right angle oil industry fences, it will um, it'll really make the difference to the way that this thing looks, kind of down from the street level. What you see it's got kind of this very secure border around it, a big spiky fence, you know. If you're kind of looking at some of the 
the largest space stations in the world, like you know Cape Canaveral in Florida, for example, which uh, I did actually take a look at before. Uh, kind of looking at designing this build, um, lots of high fences. You know, you can't just walk into a place like this. Uh, they are very secure. Uh, I don't think we have any in England. I don't even know if England has a space program. As far as I'm aware, we don't. Um, but you know, the big ones in Russia, America, and China. Great stuff on um, Google Maps to, to help you prepare for this. And when you're kind of drawing in the uh, the fences, you can just kind of stick to the edge of the grid patterns and uh, draw yourself in. Recommend keeping the, the fence to the straight road tool because it's kind of very unusual to see a curved fence kind of based on the metal or well, the material this thing is made out of. So keeping it at right angles and then drawing it parallel with your highway just kind of gives a nice grand impression it's all very fenced off and then you kind of come into this large open space here and uh, you've got your your car parks which we'll have a look at towards the end of the episode as well and uh, you know don't forget to hook your monorail station into an existing line as well which I'll do kind of towards the detail and end of the episode uh, but that's really it guys we'll, uh, we'll hook this guy in as well um, let's cut off a little bit and let's make a nice little box down here a uh, final thing you want to do is turn off all your traffic lights here uh, because the, the Chirpex launch site does attract uh, industrial traffic. So uh, if you don't know this, traffic routes, junctions is a unmodded way to turn off your traffic lights without traffic manager. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're the only ones that spawn in. Uh, yes they are. Uh, so this thing right here, the reason I put in the toll booth is because it kind of acts like a, like a security gate, right? And uh, we have a whole bunch of, you know, kind of important secure buildings over here as well uh, but yeah I want to jump into a little bit of a detailing session and then uh, we'll flesh out this field here with some maybe some park assets and some paths uh, lots of thick trees around this thing to kind of forest it off and then uh, we'll come back once we're ready to kind of show it off Alright guys, just a couple more things before we kind of jump into the uh, the final detail outro Taj. This right here, the Edison Hypercharger, this is the Green Cities asset that you are looking to generate within this area. See, it's the 2x4 and the whole thing is just a car park. It's, uh, it's quite spicy. Um, if you don't have the patience for this, there are a couple of other Green Cities buildings that do have uh, parking decals in front of them, like uh, this one, the Organic Tees. Uh, it really just 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 depend uh, you know how bothered you are about having these out in front once they do appear make them historical and, uh, and you'll be good to go you can see there are a whole bunch of other 2x4 assets that come in so it's just a trial and error see we got another one right there 
And uh, so right now what we can do is uh, go ahead and fill in this one. There you go. And then wait for another one to appear there. And then uh, that's it. It's a, uh, it's a very, what you're best off doing is just keeping your eye on this over a long period of time and waiting until they eventually come in. Like I said, you know, it's it's just such a long process. Hopefully, maybe in a DLC, um, unmodded players will get maybe like a traffic thing. Uh, that would be super great for console players as well to get access to something like Traffic Manager. And, uh, you know, to actually throw in some, some pa car parks as well. Because there's so many car parks in cities, uh, you know, that we can't really place them without having to use something from the workshop. So, this is the way for console players to do it. You obviously need green cities to do it. So you can see we got another one in. It's not taking vast amounts of time, but it isn't an instantaneous process. All right, guys, that is going to do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, a like below is always appreciated. Equally as much if you didn't enjoy it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Apologies if you're not a fan of these more quirkier builds, but I thought this was actually really fun to put together. And uh, definitely hang around for the rest of the outro charge and see those parking lots in action outside the Hadron Collider. Uh, they turned out really nicely. It didn't take too long to get them all in, uh, but they are there now. Uh, but yeah, that's it for me. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.